we're going to accomplish something out of this meeting tonight. And, and uh, you know, us in Columbia County and the city of Lake City, we're in a very unique opportunity here. We've got a new city manager going to be coming on sometime here in the near future. And uh, uh, we all, my personal opinion is economic growth is driven by utilities. Utilities are driven by economic growth. So, you know, with them two, that's, that's two of my pet peeves. And uh, I, I'm just here to get everybody's input tonight. And uh, I hope did the best job I could do put this panel together. And I think uh, uh, this is just the beginning of where we're going to end in the future. So, Mike, at this time, I'd turn it over to you. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Um, but, well, this is for TV. This is, this is not hot in here. Uh, let's have everybody go around the room and introduce yourselves. I know we start with Commissioner DePrater. District 2. Melinda Moses, Lake City City Council. Greg Galpin, Warehouser. Everett Phillips, County Commissioner, District 4. Jake Hill, District 12, Lake City uh, City Council. Nick Patel of Lake City Hotels. Stephen Witt, Mayor, City of Lake City. Tim Murphy, County Commissioner, District 5. John O'Neill, O'Neill Companies. Lex Carswell, Superintendent, Columbia County Schools. Bucky Nash, County Commissioner, District 3. Eugene Jefferson, City Councilman, District 10. Jordan Green, Department of Transportation. Larry Barron, air conditioning guy. I'm <laughs> Florida Gateway College. Ron Williams, County Commissioner. Misty Zecker, Realtor, Remax Professional. We started out with letting everybody know we were going to throw some starter questions out here so nobody would be caught off guard about how to, how to uh, respond. But the first question is to everyone, anyone can answer. What does economic development look like in the next five years in Lake City and in Columbia County? What, what, what do you see it being? Are we talking about heavy industrial? Are we talking about intermodal? Are we talking about tourism? What, what are we talking about? And anyone can answer. Just raise your hand when you're about to answer so we can get the cameras on you to get your response. Mayor Witt? Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Commissioner Murphy for having this, thank the college for putting it on and doing the usual good job they always do with having our events here, uh, the chamber. Uh, Lake City's on grow in spite of us. I mean, we're in an area that's just ripe for development, ripe for growth. If you look down 75 and start down south and come forward, you, you see it's just going to grow. Uh, we're fortunate that I think we're in a position to do managed growth here where we can meet the needs of our community and make opportunities here. Uh, we won't always, you know, we're in Florida, we're going to have tourist industry and that's, you know, good. We've grown out 90 West. Uh, we've got a lot of opportunities as I, in the email about the different areas of Lake City and Columbia County that we're looking at growth. And I think we need to look at each one of them and see what resources are needed there for that type of growth. Uh, everybody's always talked about good jobs and being able to, kids getting out of school can stay in Lake City. And, and I think that's what we're really here to do is to make sure we get good jobs. And I think we have, you know, with all the resources, the rivers, the springs, things that we have, we ought to be someplace that people want to come to. So we ought to pick and choose the ones we want. And, and hopefully we can get the right places and get some good jobs here. Anybody else want to? Commissioner Williams. Thank you, Mark. 10 years ago, we had a forum sort of like this in Richmond. And the title of Columbia County Future, Lake City Columbia County Futures now. And as I look back, uh, what have expired over the last 10 years, we're still in the same rut that we were 10 years ago. Uh, Columbia County future is still great. Uh, uh, when I say Columbia County, I'm talking about the city and, and, uh, is included. So if I'm in my comment, if I don't say the city is not, that I'm going to look at the city. Because they are the most viable part of the growth of Columbia County. You cannot have growth without utilities. And we are struggling with utilities now. So until we fix utilities or have a resource where utilities are available for companies that when they want to come in and we don't have to put in package plants and we don't have to do this, 
that is the main uh, objective that what we need to do. We got to have the infrastructure in place. You can't go to a XYZ company and say, well, uh, we want to hear, but we got the, got the bill of utility, got to go to Tallahassee and get a grant, put in sewer here, uh, put in water here, a paver road here, or do that. We have identified the growth area in Columbia County. We, we know where that is. Uh, and, 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 and what we need to do is make sure that the infrastructure is in place to accomplish what our goals are. Got to bring industry into Columbia County, but you got to have the infrastructure in place, and infrastructure is still the, the main issue that we have for industrial growth in Columbia County. You jumped ahead of here with, with some of our weaknesses. Is that the main weakness? I mean, I've heard infrastructure, I've heard utilities. Uh, is, can anybody else speak to that? Mike, let, Mike, let me sure. go back to the previous uh, question you had. Um, what I see, you know, I'm, I'm a hotelier, and so I have more knowledge about hotels. Um, in, in the next two to five years, I see close to $40 million worth of investment in the hotel industry. Um, I see $2 million worth of wages, okay? I see $20 million worth of economic impact just because of the new hotels coming into this town. 150,000 more people coming into this town. And $1 million worth of tax revenue to the local government. And that's what I see in the next three to five years. Uh, I think there's tremendous opportunities here. And I applaud uh, you know, Tim and the commissioners here for bringing this group together. I think we all have talked about doing stuff. But at the end of the day, we just don't have the right chemistry or, or, or meeting of the minds uh, to, 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 to really uh, take this uh, forward. Uh, and, and and there was, there's today, there will be a lot of ideas which would float around. And I think, hopefully, the momentum is not lost. Uh, because uh, as, as a member of the TDC, we've been trying to do a lot for a long period of time. And uh, I hope uh, something like this will, will continue to happen, and, 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 and the elected officials will continue to support it. So. Mr. Yeah, one of the things that, you know, I've been here roughly five years, we wait on Utilities. I think the relationship between the county and the city uh, should get better. Um, no fault of anybody. It's just they have certain things. They're probably better at utilities than we are. But when we go, for example, to Bell Road and we get, uh, you know, an idea of what it's going to cost to develop that area, we should at some point, either commissioners or whatever, start putting a reserve for economic, we, right now we don't have a reserve to speak of. So I, I would like to, in the future, see the commissioners make a commitment to put money in reserve for utilities or different things like that. And we, we always have places to spend it elsewhere, but uh, because it's like if, if a project comes along, then we have to go to the city, or are they going to do it? Then we have to go look for a grant. There's just so much red tape to get through, and if it's a good enough project, I feel like if you have enough reserve, you just go ahead and do the project. Anybody else like to talk about Nate? Yeah, I think just myself and Bucky, we just talked about it. Uh, and Commissioner Will, uh, William just said uh, about it, that the city and the county needs to work together. Uh, cohesively, and projects will happen only if the city and the county uh, work together as a team. Because ultimately, driving economic activity and driving economic growth in this town uh, and, and the larger area in Columbia County will not happen if these two entities do not cooperate with each other and talk to them uh, properly. So I was talking with Bucky. One of the things we could do is every time a new company wants to come, and we read in newspapers. You know, I am. Um, uh, Incentive package, creating incentive package is very important. And I know the IDA does that. But most of the time, funds are not available to do that. So just like what Bucky said, it, when you're looking for $2 million or $3 million as an incentive package, the county or the city doesn't have the money. So the best thing to do is put reserves. Every year, the city and the county contributes into a reserve, maybe an economic development reserve or an infrastructure reserve and put money in it every year. And maybe in the next five, six years, you're gonna have millions of dollars in that reserve. 
and that you could use it to incentivize for any businesses to come here, and that's the only possible way that you'll have better leverage, because there are a lot of other counties and a lot of other cities who compete for the same business. And if you cannot incentivize better than the other ones, they're not going to come here. Anybody else like to add anything to that? Are we, are we impatient about <coughs> economic development? Anybody? Impatient? You say impatient? Yeah. You're dang right. I'm impatient. <laughs> uh, you, uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Murphy's term, I'm tired of kicking this darn can down the road. I, uh, I, I get, I'm a person that if I, if I put fertilizer on the grass, I expect to be green the next hour. Uh, I spray Roundup, I expect that, that, that plant to be dead the next hour. So uh, uh, I, 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 I don't think we, we work together as a collective body, that's, that, that's everybody from the newspaper to the, to the janitor that has something to do with Columbia County, in a sense of speaking. Uh, we, we, we see things go to other places, and I hear people say, well, we don't want mediocre jobs, uh, uh, we want high paying jobs, but we are not the Marion County uh, that can pick and choose what we, we want to come here or what we don't. And uh, Robert and I talk about this all the time, uh, about small jobs. Uh, a 10, 12 hour, uh, hour, uh, an hour job. And I always say a, 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 a small job is better than a big job, you know, since the uh, I, I can look back some, some <coughs> when I was finished school in 62, I started to work for 65 cents an hour. That meant something to me. We were building a lawyer daughter house, the house he's still living right now. I'm going to give you a little scenario, I'm going to be quiet. If you ever been to this house, you got this circle, half circle, a uh, staircase come up. And every time Mr. Ralph Blackman put it up, it landed never worked. I, I had took a set of plans home, and I figured out what he was doing wrong. I called Mr. Bill that morning, and I said, I know Mr. Ralph's doing good. I went from 65 cents an hour to a dollar an hour. I was bringing home $37.86 a week. That meant something, a minimum wage job. A minimum wage job is bad, no job. So we can ask for the pie in the sky on everything. Uh, so I'm in, impatient when it comes to that. We, we, we got to work together to provide decent jobs, even if they're clean, minimum wage jobs for people, because that mean a lot to a lot of people. Anybody else like to talk about? What Mike, real quick, uh, <clears throat> what Mr. Williams said there, he, 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 he hit the nail on the head. Uh, I want Columbia County to be successful, but I know, I'm smart enough to know that me and Ron and the rest of the commissioners here, we can't be successful without the success of the city council and every, every other business in this community. It, it's just, uh, I think uh, the consensus of one of my goals in this meeting, I think has already been met. A uh, simple fact, we must work together. We must have a strategic plan. I hate to use that word strategic, but you know, it, it's, uh, I had a discussion with Ms. Uh, Moses. Uh, I realize the city of Lake City can't fund every single uh, utilities project there is available. And, and, and I hate, and, and, and I know uh, me and Mr. Hunter's had numerous conversations about different grant opportunities and what have you for infrastructure issues. And I think we do a good job of working towards that, but at the end of the day, uh, and I'll go on when I uh, uh, touch on the I-7547 project there, it's gonna take a commitment out of us as local government. We're, we up here, we're the ones held responsible, and that's what I'm asking you guys. Hold us guys responsible and ladies up here. Y'all elected us to take a stand and make a difference, and, and, and uh, I've been sitting in that audience for many, many years. I've learned a lot of stuff. I, I always use Ron's uh, old comments. Uh, I think we ought to put a man up there on the overpass at I-75 and 90 right down every truck and company goes by. And he's used that a gazillion times, and it, it, it sounds stupid, but it's the way me and him think it makes sense i mean that's that's the target we got to go after and we we've got to out of this hopefully out of this summit 
we'll get more direct on what type of industry or high intensity commercial we want to go at. And that, that's my main goal here. And uh, I'll just shut up with that because I know we've got to give everybody Does any, else. anybody else have a, an idea of what they'd like to see it look like? I mean, heavy industrial, light industrial, intermodal, manufacturing, Mr. Galpin? I'm going to speak a little bit um, selfishly as representative of Weyerhaeuser and the North Florida Mega Industrial Park. But we feel strongly uh, about the good parts of Columbia County and Lake City in this project. I mean, I've, I was there 10 years ago. Uh, I was there when Commissioner Williams led the cheer, and, and it was invigorating. And there's a lot of benefit to this community. We see it, that we, we see it here that we don't see elsewhere. That being said, it's not perfect. There's always room for growth and betterment. And it is a, it's a relationship and a partnership that, that requires investment. It requires focus and plenty of due diligence because I never would have believed we would not have a user on that site in 10 years. But we have it. We've come close. We've had a lot of interest uh, in late. I counted up uh, earlier today how much interest and visits we've had over the last year. And without, again, all of it's confidential, so you've got to bear with me. I can't get real specific, but I can run through some quick numbers just to let you know there's interest in a total of 2,170 acres, uh, a total of over 9,000 jobs with a capital investment of over $12 billion. The good news is they're coming to look. The bad news is we haven't landed one yet, and it's a little bit like the chicken and the egg, and, and I would like to recommend to the community that you focus on manufacturing because that's the highest multiplier. For every dollar you spend on manufacturing, you get back $1.85. And if you look at the average salary of a manufacturing job in Columbia County, it's 42000 That's a living wage. And so to me, it's a collection of not just industrial because it all comes together. I mean, one of the biggest problems we have right now is where can people come to stay on the east side of the town? Are there, is there housing available? And so again, you can't go out there and build housing if there's nobody willing to buy them. And if you don't have anybody willing to rent out a conference room or a set of motel rooms, it's hard to invest that money. And so it's a collection of focus, uh, diligence, and, and really an investment in the future that it requires. And it's, it's not easy. It's a marathon and not a race. And that's uh, that all I want to partake. Anybody else like to talk about what, it, what they like to see it look like? <coughs> Before we move on, okay. Uh, we did a, a survey um, a while back and we asked people what they thought are um, good things about Columbia County and, and locating here. What do you think some of the, the good things, uh, the, the positives about Columbia County? Any, anybody can respond. Jordan? Well, hands down, I think the transportation network <laughs> that we have, I mean, I represent DOT, but uh, the transportation network that we have in Columbia County, when you look at it collectively in North Central Florida, it's unparalleled. I didn't really mean that to be a pun, but um, we, you know, we got two interstates. We've got rail running north, south, east, west. Um, we've got an airport. We've got the intermodal park. I mean, all the pieces are in place transportation-wise. Um, DOT is on board with you. Um, that's central in our mission statement right behind safety is to enhance economic prosperity. Now, granted, we have, as a district, we've got to spread that amongst 18 counties, but you know, our district headquarters is here in Lake City in Columbia County. Um, and so that, that is a strength that we have that, that most counties do not have with those, those interstates and the rail access, et cetera. You know, 75 miles from, the, from Jacksport um, 85 miles or so from Fernandina. So uh, the, the infrastructure and network of transportation is there to, you know, it, it's economic development and transportation. They're kind of a two-way street. Um, that pun was intended to, you know, you got to get the goods to the people and the people to the goods. And so without that transportation network, then, you know, we're going to be behind the, uh, behind the eight ball there. Um, you know, as far as a an investment. Um, I've pulled a report over the last 10 years. The Department of Transportation has spent over $130 million in Columbia County 
in construction alone. That's not counting the design, that's not counting the salary dollars of those of us that work here, with an additional 35 million planned over the course of the next five years. So, so we hear you, we're on board with you, um, you know, and we've worked very well together in the past and we look to continue that relationship. Other positives? And I Wait. think that just to kind of toot Jordan's horn there, I, we're, we're at a real, uh, we're at a real advantage having the district sitting right here amongst our backyard. Uh, I've heard Mr. Williams speak over the years and I keep picking on Ron because I've learned a little bit from him over the years, but uh, like Ron uh, made a mention one time, we was having a meeting with Jordan and them, uh, uh, they're so accessible to us, we're at, a, we're at a great advantage compared to the Ocala's and, and stuff like that, even though they've been successful in their, uh, but uh, and the, I think all the targets are in line, Jordan, it's just a matter of us uh, collectively targeting on them and, and, and uh, improving upon them at this point. Um, one of the largest uh, assets we have is still affordability. Affordability of homes in Florida. Um, you, know, you get even 15, 20 minutes down the road, and the buying power is much less down there. People are definitely coming this way from down south because they can afford a lot more in Columbia County. The draw for retirees, if they're wanting to travel, we're right here by I 10 and I 75. People coming just over the border, not having state income tax. So, and we are in a prime spot. Um, so, you know, you can still have acreage. Um, you know, you're very close to Jacksonville, Gainesville for commuting purposes, for jobs that are paying. Um, so, you know, that is a huge asset here. And on the commercial end, you know, talking about 47 and I-75, we have buyers. We put packages together and they just aren't coming because of you know, the infrastructure that we need. It's not a, it's a we build and they'll come. I mean, they, we have to have it for them. But I mean, the, the infrastructure as far as what they need, we, we do need to get it here, but our prices are so affordable we're just getting passed up. Is this sort of like doing the cost of business to do in, in Lake City? It's, it's lower than other places? Oh, it's even in Gainesville. Mm -hmm. And one of the things too, and we always appreciate the DOT, uh, Epcot for what they do for Columbia County, and, and as you see the number, they, it's a lot. But uh, along with that infrastructure, we have a great electrical grid with the, with the power company that we have here. So when you look at everything and put the pieces together, the pieces are there. And when one looks at Columbia County, we have the quality of life for any family that wants to have this type of quality of life. Uh, uh, we don't want anything that, that's going to deteriorate the quality of life that we share now. But that is an access to Columbia County, uh, to a business that want to move here. All the things that have been mentioned, plus the quality of life that we have here in Columbia County, in this area. And, and these guys that, uh, 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 with, with, with Hunter out here, and those guys that go out and market Columbia County, uh, when one looks at Columbia County, and they usually look at the county seat, and they look at the population of the county seat, and they say, well, I've got 10,000 people in the county seat, but well, that can't be a possible community growing. You go back and you go back the last 10, 12 years, it's still 10,000 people, maybe a little over 10,000 now. But you look at Columbia County as a whole, uh, you have a, a greater number. And then some come to say, well, that's still not enough, but we are at the point where we market Columbia County in the 20 Valley region. And within a 20 matter million, you have three, 400,000 people that you can choose from. His, his, we outsource 40% of our jobs. People work outside Columbia County. Some people drive as far as Tallahassee, 100 miles away to go to work. Some people drive that far to come to Columbia County and work. So what you have to make business understand is we don't mind driving 100 miles to go to work. Uh, it's not like a metropolitan area where they want to drive a few. It might take them three hours to get to work, but they're driving 10 miles. Uh, we'll drive those 100 miles, those 50 miles, go to work. So, so that's a part of, of what we have. We have good old country folks in all these counties around here that don't mind driving 100 miles to go to work. You know, the fact that Jeff is here in the back, the fact that FPL brings uh, their entire team down here during the time of hurricane and, and kind of disperse everybody from Lake City is, is, is the fact. And, and 
nobody can doubt <laughs> that they would not be doing that if this was not a good location. And we see it every day. Uh, you know, every guest, you know, Lake City for the last 30 years, 40 years, uh, has been a, a good exit. And uh, the transient uh, guest who would come into this town and use the restaurants and the retails is still continuing. Uh, we won't be building hotels if we felt that this is not a good location. So the fact that we are located, uh, you know, as a first major town, uh, you know, um, coming from north uh, is, is, is an added advantage. And I think um, uh, nobody doubts that. Uh, I think the fact that, as everyone said here, is that we've just got to put a team together and, and, and create incentive packages and, 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 and go out very aggressively. Um, you, you can always set criteria you know, to spend the money. You know, but it's, it's so critical that something has to happen. It's, it's, it's time that Lake City lands a good manufacturing or a logistic business, which hasn't happened for many years. So. Anybody else? Strengths? Mayor? Uh, <clears throat> talking about uh, our transportation and uh, DOT, our airport here, we've just spent about $13 million on runways, and uh, all of that's been because of FAA and FDOT putting a lot of money out there, and uh, it's been a big plus. And it, and it will be in the future. I just see that as a benefit for this community in the future. That's going to be enormous. Next Monday, when we uh, the city council meets, we're going to be voting on a two point six nine uh, million dollar grant for uh, forty seven and seventy five for uh, wastewater to go out there and to uh, improve the uh, infrastructure out that way. So that that's a big plan for that's coming up pretty quick and and. It's been mentioned several times about the utilities and, and that interchange. So that, well, that's a start there. When I got elected 13 years ago, our wastewater plant was at capacity. We couldn't add anything on. So we started planning to expand, and one thing about it is it's expensive to do wastewater. Water's a lot easier to do and more economical, but wastewater's tremendously expensive. Uh, we had plans to improve the uh, plants, and then when the economy changed and went down, we actually slowed up, re-looked at it, geared it up differently, started out at Kicklighter, which is uh, nearing completion, and now we've even expanded that back to our original three million because of the growth we see coming here. And so the city's you know, utility is in the growth phase, and uh, I think we're in a position to start growing, and, and it's like everybody said, you can't build houses if people aren't there, but people come needing houses, and you, you know, people want utilities on this piece of property, but if nobody's wanting to move to that property, you can't have it just sitting there. So it's, it's a mix and match thing and planning, and um, that's what we have to do for the future is all get together and look at where we got potential and talk to these businesses and get them interested in coming here and pr provide the resources. Anybody else about strengths? Right, how about let's talk about weaknesses? And nobody likes to talk about weaknesses, especially on television. <laughs> Anybody? I mean, we've talked we've talked about infrastructure earlier, that as being a, a perceived weakness. Uh, Mike, I'll, I'll kick it off. Weaknesses, I think we've already figured <coughs> out. Definitely one of the utility issues. You know, like I said from the beginning, utilities drives economic development, vice versa. And and the study that myself and you and Daniil reviewed in her office that day, you know, one of the findings, one of the major findings in that result uh, was us up here not working collectively together. Uh, I think that was one of the biggest focal points. And, and that's, uh, uh, that's a major weakness. You know, when, when you got outsiders looking into Columbia County and uh, the truth is, you know, heck when, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, this family and that family can't work together. You know, uh, why, why do we want to go get in the middle of that mix? You know, it, it's just that simple. It's time that we put our egos, and and you got to keep your opinions out there. And uh, you know, the county's no greater than the city, and vice versa. You know, I I think I've been on record to saying that, you know, the city 
uh, they're in the utility business and I think they're dang good at it, you know, and then for whatever reason, you know, we've, we've entered into the utility business to try to enhance some things in Ellisville and it seems to be working out. But, you know, still with all that in mind, collectively, we've got to come with a master plan. I mean, uh, the eco I see most every member here of the Economic Development Board, and, and these are people that dedicate their time, and, you know, they don't get paid a penny for this. And they put, there, there's a lot of Economic Development members that, that, that put in a lot of time into uh, uh, talking to others, to, you know, uh, reaching out, getting information, and, uh, you know, I look at it this way. If a volunteer can put forth that kind of time, us as government definitely can. And, you know, and it, and it, starts, uh, it starts with us. We're, we're the ones that call the shots. Uh, our county manager and the city manager, uh, we don't work for them. They work for us. It's up to us to direct them, give them the tools to work with, just like economic development and everything. We must give them the proper tools in the box to work with if they're gonna be successful along with us as a community. And I think that's weaknesses and strong points, but you know. Uh, Mike, yeah. Nick hit the nail on the head on something that he said. Uh, we're at a disadvantage uh, with Georgia uh, being one way and Marion County being the other way, which is our biggest competitor. Uh, Gainesville is not, you know, since speak. Uh, it's more of a university type setting there. But we, we, we have a tough road to hold with Marion County and with the state of Georgia. And I always use, use, use this to, to explain why I say that. Uh, when it comes to economic development and putting everything in place so you can be very successful, it costs dollars to do so. A lot of people don't understand why we have to buy a company. But of all the good things that we said about Columbia County, that still don't make them come here. It's this, it's those dead presidents uh, that make them come here. You got to have that sort of investment to do something. We, we do not do that. Um, we heard uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Bucky, not Bucky, uh, Tim say that. Uh, I always say it's like, like, like competing against Georgia and Marion County, they got an M16 and we got a BB gun. So we're not gonna win that, we're not gonna win that battle, in a sense of speaking. But we got to make a commitment to uh, be able to stuff a coffin, an economic development coffin, and put dollars in that coffin so with the help of Tallahassee, we can have enough money to give an incentive to a company once they want to move to Columbia County. But until we do that, we gonna have a tough road to hope. So we got to be able to set aside money uh, uh, year in and year out to help supplement the DOT grants and all of the, uh, the DOT grant and the state of Tal uh, Tal uh, capital, Tallahassee grant to be able to do so. I know that DOT would be willing to do, say, my, if we can have a project cost three million dollars, and say, look here, guys, we got a million, million and a half dollars that we can help you all with this project. And I think we move up on the list when we do that. But until we are able to do that, and then secondly, the relationship, I'm going to call it ace or ace or spade or spade, the relationship between the city and county <coughs> over the years have not been where it needs to be. I don't care about turf. All I care about is providing. The, the opportunity for young people, or old people, or middle-aged people to go to work here in Columbia County. I'll give you a good example. And, and maybe the city council at that time didn't know anything about it. When DOT did 47, Dale William and I went to the city manager at that time and said, guys, you need to put your utilities in place now for your sewer so you don't have to come back and do it. He told us that he didn't have, that the city didn't have the money to do it. Well, we'll give you the money to do it, and you all pay us by it. I don't know whether that message ever got to the city council, the members themselves. We wouldn't be struggling with infrastructure in the ground to that project there now. It would have been easier to do before DOT did that wonderful job on 47, like they done, to go in there now and try to run uh, uh, underground utility, in a sense of speaking. So that's where we have fallen short over the years. We have had this territory, them, and then them over here. Them and us, it should be all of us working together to do so. But how does that happen? No communication. <coughs> lack of communication and the lack of trust. 
Poet life. That's why it happened. Well, I mean, how do you overcome that? I mean, oh, that's, that's... You, 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 you fix that by working together, sitting down. Uh, we used to have city and county meetings, and we sit down and hit one of them all the time to where we told the city what we don't like about them, and the city told us what we need to work about them. A working relationship so we can communicate and be all on the same page. When you have a city manager and a county coordinator, don't you speak to one another? You got trouble, buddy, bro. A lot of trouble. If there's no communication between the top head, two head men, you got trouble. Because a lot of times it's what discussed don't get back to the Board of County Commissioners, it don't get back to the City Council. It's shut off right there between those two. And you fix that, hopefully this board that I serve with, our county coordinator ain't gonna be doing that. And I hope that when the city get a new city manager, that it's an open door policy. I can come see you and you can come see me. We sit down, why can we help you? City, why, how can we help you count it? In that way, you'll solve it. And Mike, I, I'm gonna, I was asked that question just the other day by one of the reporters. Well, what's your ultimate goal out of this? And I hope what we'll bring out of this is that at least every quarter, city government and city and, and uh, county government sits down in the sunshine it, this is where I got a problem. We have these conference room decisions, uh, 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 correspondence, uh, and your opinions all are all heard right there, but I, I'm asking Columbia County, hold us accountable for a change. You know, that everybody hears what's on that, that, that TV recorder here tonight, and, and, and that's what I'm saying. It, it's time that y'all start holding us as government accountable for our actions and, and make us do our job, you know. And, and I don't. I think everybody up here has done their job. To the, but Mr. Williams hit the nail on the head. It, you, you've got to have open communications. And Mr. Casey has been around a long time. He's seen a bunch of comes and a bunch of goes. <laughs> and, but but my point is, if we operated the way we did back in the 50s today we'd still be stagnant. It's time to make a change. And then when we have these open conversations, you have them in the public. And, and, and you make a decision. And, and you hold us to the decision. And then this way, like Ron said, you can't have opinions sitting up there at the top that, you know, well, all of a sudden he don't want to meet, or he, he or she, whoever that one person may, then all of a sudden they got a, you know, they got a, a some of a mysterious uh, meeting they got to show up to. Hold it, we're gonna set them once a quarter and I'm gonna encourage my board that I serve with to, to, to get with management and then they're gonna get with the city and we're gonna have these quarterly meetings and we're gonna get something accomplished for, uh, for a change. We got, we got to put a plan in place. I mean, because if we don't have open discussion, when I asked uh, Ms. Zecker to consider coming here and sitting and, and talking to us, I, I got the, you know, I said, well, you know, I didn't want to put her in a bad position and everything, so I get to studying her, uh, her business a little bit, and, and she's right. It's, it's amazing. Uh, uh, dollar versus dollar, it, you, it, that's why there's a shortfall. I was in the Lake Street Reporter just the other day. You know, we, we're, our inventory's running slack, but I can understand why it's running slack because dollar versus dollar, just in Marion County alone, less than 100 miles away, it's amazing what you can buy here. You know, and so I kind of educated myself a little bit on that, and, and I think she touched on that. But uh, along with that being said, it, it's just time that them types, of, these type of people need to come educate us more on the so. You know, I thought I knew a pretty good bit about real estate. I figured I didn't know nothing, you know. So. Uh, Are you talking about having something similar to this or just the, just the, the legislative bodies? I, 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 Mike, my goal, and this is going to be something we're going to have to have a discussion with uh, Mr. Scott, the uh, uh, mayor, and then, of course, the. Uh, I, I personally think that, you know, we, we've got an economic development director. He needs clear guidance and support of which direction we want this man to work for Columbia County. And, but we just don't need to send him down a dark path. We need to be there. To, to, to give them supportive tools and, and, and build this team up. This, and, and I hope that the city will consider in the future somebody earmarked through the city that is your economic, and the, and the, and the uh, city manager could very well be that person. 
And, uh, you know, I've talked to other communities, a lot of your city managers and your uh, uh, county coordinators are, quote, the economic development directors, if you want to say. Uh, and, but we've got to come collectively together. Number one, get a plan. How are we going to support each other? Because I think it's pretty well a given deal here. Infrastructure, sewage is the biggest problem you got. <coughs> You know, uh, myself and the director and uh, Ben has talked about it many, many times. You know, we, we, uh, we've got a lot of projects sitting out here on hold because of, you know, we, we don't know what it takes. And then you got a gentleman over there, Mr. Paul Dow, that's over utilities. That, that my goal is everything that goes on in this county that is utilities driven must go through a gentleman like this. That, that's what we, that the city pays him for. He, he should be our director of utilities that gives us the guidance on which way to go because uh, just like the gentleman from Warehouser said before, you know, he, I've heard the saying in this, uh, from uh, Mr. Wendell Johnson one time, me and him was having a conversation, you know, uh, you can't hardly build it and they'll come because of the way finances work sometimes, but then again, Somewhere along the line, like Ron was saying, we, we got to buck up and we, we got to put forth, uh, you know, we, I feel like us as a board, we made a heck of a commitment when we got this rail grant here a while back. And I, uh, but, you know, we stepped forward at that time and said, yeah, we'll sign this thing because we had to commit to X amount of jobs. And, but us as a board, we're going to set money aside this budget cycle to make sure that we can afford that thing in 10 years from now. You know, so I feel like we're, that's the beginning of doing the right thing, but, and uh, I get kind of carried away, so y'all stop me when I, but. <laughs> it's your meeting, I can't stop you. <laughs> um, Hi. Yes, Melinda. Just one quick thing on those lines that um, I heard something disturbing today that we may be at capacity in five to six years. Now we've just built kick lighter, you know, and that is very scary to me. And we're talking about bringing, trying to get other companies to come, and we've got to have that wastewater, you know, mm -hmm. that people may not want to talk about all the time. But we were fortunate to get the pipe that goes out to 47, but that was an ecological grant. It wasn't an economic development grant. So we've got some things we need to, that's the scariest part to me, is talking about utilities. Nick? Yeah, we, we talk about the weaknesses, so, um, and I've myself experienced it here, and I think Kaysen would tell me that, uh, that I'm right. Uh, if, you look in, if you look at the last few years, and you look at all the fees which are attached to development, whether you consider impact fees or, 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 or permitting fees or fire assessment fees or stormwater fees, if you really put it together, it's an enormous cost. I'll just give you an example. To build a 100-room hotel, in the city of Lake City, the impact fees are close to $300,000. The impact fees have gone up more than 65% over last year. And I'm not saying this very lightly, but the elected officials need to realize that when you put so much fees, it is very difficult to, to build. And, and at some point, you have to realize that we're still small. We are not Gainesville, we're not Marion County. We still need to keep our fees low if we want economic development here. So you can't say that we are in line with everybody else where we are not in line with everybody else because we are still comparatively a small <coughs> city. So I hope uh, going forward, maybe some relief is given uh, and that, that Otherwise, the cost of doing business uh, becomes very high. So. Any other weaknesses? I know uh, Missy e might want to talk about the, the lack of inventory of houses, or, or are we back up to where we? Oh, no, we're, we're at a serious shortage. We're about a four-month supply, which is the lowest we've been in probably 15 years or more. Um, the, the resale, thankfully builders are building, and we had a tremendous, tremendous success this weekend with the program. I was very excited for the builders, and you know, they have really been the ones hit super hard. You know, people are always going to buy and sell, but the builders have really struggled over the last 10 years, so it was very excited to see them. But our resale inventory is at about a four month supply, new construction homes. Um, which we knew it was going to create a shortage when the bank stopped lending, you know, nationally. But a new home in the resale market is about a four or five or six, because that's when builders 
stopped building. Um, so the issue at the moment is where are these builders going to build? We don't have lots. Subdivisions. When was the last subdivision built? Ten years ago. So we we it's a it's a serious issue at the moment. So the recession hit everybody so hard that they don't want to risk it anymore. Quit. And then you know, like Nick said, you know, the cost of development. Then we had impact fees. We had to fight for builders. We were able to get that rescinded for a certain amount of time, but. You know, new developments. There's not been a new development uh, since 08. <laughs> Mark. Yeah. Uh, I spoke with Brother Rivers not too often long ago, and I, I, and I said to them, I was a contractor, and I was uh, selling houses, uh, development of subdivision, I would go to Plum Creek. We have mixed roofs out there. If you think ahead, that's not going to be a sleeping giant for long. Uh, in Yellowhoo, and we have this shortage on houses. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the uh, east side of, uh, of Columbia County. Everybody want to go west and southwest. But you heard the gentleman say, we don't have houses in the area for a, our clients <coughs> when they want to move in. They want to stay close to where they're working in Central City. Uh, but uh, they have a mixed use development. The largest mixed use, of, mixed use development in Columbia County the Plum Creek in the warehouse now, you know, since speaking. So developers need to take advantage of that piece of property with mixed use out there in order to help uh, the realtors uh, uh, be able to have a home to sell. Uh, it's a great opportunity. And Greg, at, at Warehouser, you actually have residential property on your property. Yes, we have 300 uh, residential units, uh, primarily for work workhouse, but uh, we'd be glad to talk to a builder or a developer. I noticed in, in the, uh, the, the little survey we did, workforce was an issue uh, and that it seems like that's an issue everywhere. Uh, anybody like to address workforce? Jordan? I'll touch on that a little bit, Mike. Um, you know, it kind of dovetails right in with what Missy was saying. <clears throat> and this is a statewide issue. This isn't just localized to Columbia County, but the workforce in the construction industry as a whole, um, the vertical industry kind of gets the, the spotlight, but in the horizontal construction industry, we too are, are seeing a, a shortage. Um, we just, uh, this spring, uh, held our either our fourth or fifth annual construction career days where we bus in um, high school students in partnership with industry to introduce them to road and bridge construction and survey work and that type of thing. And so we, we're feeling it too. Um, there's a lot of road and bridge work out there, uh, certainly in our district, but around the state that is really sucking up a lot of the labor and, uh, and likewise in the vertical industry. So that's something you know, that can't be ignored either is, is that workforce. You know, it's, economic development's a very complex problem. Um, I don't know that we're going to get it solved tonight, but you know, there, there's a lot of facets to it. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I consider people it, part of the infrastructure. And I think Dr. Merrick and I represent probably people here more so than anybody else. And I think really what speaks volumes to me is, you know, um, we have to have positive leadership. People have got to want to be around positive people. And uh, Dr. Barrett and I have worked really hard, and I'm speaking to Hope, okay, Absolutely. Uh, 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 making a, a seamless K-20 program here in Columbia County. And we recognize the school board, and we recognize that we have two jobs. That is, we need to have people ready to work when they're 16, the part-time. And so this next year, we're starting a class called Workplace Essential Skills at both high schools. So they're going to learn life skills, job skills, pre-employment work maturity skills. And the second phase of that is we've got to have kids that when they graduate from high school, in college are able to go to work and, and have those career jobs. And so, you know, when I sit here and listen to everything we're doing, um, I, I would just implore that we, we need to make sure that everything we do, I set my personal opinion aside every day. There's not a decision I make in the Clement County School District that's based on Lex Carswell's personal opinion. Because if I led this district in a personal opinion, this is what you would get. And I don't think that's what we want. We want collectively everybody to have an opinion in this. And so I would implore the city, the council, every, and the county, everybody, all of us sitting up here need to set our personal opinion aside 
and come to work every single day and do what's right for the people and the students and everybody in Columbia County. And I think when you do that, you're going to see a change. I'm thrilled to death. Uh, Dr. Barrett and I, we probably meet together monthly. Sometimes it's on purpose, sometimes it's just because we see each other and peel each other off. And we're not, <laughs> we're not in the sunshine because we're, you know, we, we do what we do. But we want to make sure that we're putting out a product that can meet the workforce needs. And we need to be at the table when this comes, even though we don't speak, because we need to know what's coming down the road in five to 10 years. Because we've started something new in Columbia County Schools. The kindergarten class this year is the graduating class 2030. We don't call them fourth and fifth graders anymore. We call them by cohorts. And so a kindergarten class is now the class of 2030. Think about what that child's going to need from an education standpoint in the year 2030. And then fast forward and think about what that child's going to need to be an, an employment person or a person that has a job, a place to live. You know, we have got to stop thinking about this thing in the past. We've got to think about this thing in the future. And the kindergarten class of 2030, the senior class, excuse me, the senior class of 2030, which are kindergartners today, it's going to be a remarkably different world. Every single day, we need to set our personal opinions to the side and do what's right for the people in Columbia County. And, and I would encourage that. I think the schools and the college, we're ready to jump on board and do it the right way. It's not easy because apathy reigns in our schools, in our, in our attendance, and our workforce, there's just there's a, there's a reason why we can't get connected to people wanting to go to work every day. We have 1,350 employees. And in every single board meeting, you see an advertisement of people getting hired. Every single board meeting because we have, we have such a large volume of turnover. So we need to work together, and uh, we need to try to produce a workforce that's ready to meet the needs of this community in the next 5, 10, 15 years. Yeah, but the most, impo most, impo sorry. the most important thing is finding good teachers and good professors. I'm sure both of you would say that today it's even difficult to find that. Because without good professors and teachers, I think uh, we lack the education quality that we need in Columbia County. I agree. I would just follow up with Lex, and um, I couldn't agree more with Nick, is that as, as we do this, we also are not the catch-all. And many of us in this audience would um, indicate that we, our future is our high school students and our K through 20, as we talk, they absolutely are. But as we talk about new businesses and so forth, we're not going to be able to scale for large businesses in this county. Um, Lex, for the class of 2018, approximately 600 graduates, I'll guess, 600 graduates. According to statistics, within five years, the pool of educated people to be employed for good paying mid-level jobs would be about 180 people. 180, when you take statistically high school graduation rates, college completion rates, certification levels. So when we look for workforce development, it's not just going to be able to come from our high schools. We'll do everything we can and increase those numbers. But if you're looking at a company for 400 people, it's just not going to come from our high school students. It's got to come from our community retraining, we're going to have to bring in people. So as we talk about workforce and those levels, it's just not going to be able to scale. So I always hear we just need to have programs to bring in um, aviation. Our institutions and our communities cannot generate 200 immediate jobs, even in five years for that industry. We're going to have to look and do maybe 30 or 40, and we'll try to do 50 or 60 together. But we're never going to be able to do 200. We can't scale it up that much because of our sizes and our communities. So it's very important when we talk workforce, we're reality. And I think sometimes when we look for workforce, we look for these huge wins. Mm -hmm. We need baby steps so we have small wins lead to bigger wins. And we can do it well in quality. <coughs> so. That's right. And I'll touch on that real quick, Dr. Barrett. When we uh, <coughs> helped get the uh, welding technologies program started back here several years back, and we were just hoping to fill a class. And of course, it's been a successful uh, task. Uh, of course, uh, in, in what's neat about it, one feeds off of the other. Uh, our high school, and I, you know, I'm a welder by trade, but you know, we just had tremendous success this weekend. Uh, and, but then again, the, with the mechanical uh, programs that we we got in, in sight here at the college, and uh, uh, I heard me and Mike are having a conversation here a while back, how far mm -hmm. they're reaching out for professors. Uh, I think you were saying, you know, we're taking advantage of uh, the state of New York or something, you know, reaching out for a different, you know, so that's, uh, it's pretty neat how far you're having to reach out to get these 
to, like Nick said, you know, qualified professors to be able to, it, it's a big show, but I, I, I understand exactly where you're coming from on the mass employment deal. Uh, it, uh, I, I personally, I wasn't a part of it, but I dealt with some, some of the real integral parts of when they opened the Kia plant up in LaGrange, Georgia. One of the most painstaking, th they'll be dealing with that for 30 years to come. But, you know, they, they got the point there. But again, Atlanta was sitting right there at 32 miles. That, that was their draw point. So it helped there. But it's, uh, but, uh, you know, we're at another advantage, like uh, Jordan said a minute ago, with the college sitting here, uh, you know, the support of the, you know, high school, I mean, the school system feeding each other. Uh, I think we're getting as much as we can get out of it right now. But, you know, we'll still continue to look, you know, for future growth out of both of them. All right, we're an hour into this forum. Uh, doesn't seem like it has, does it? Uh, anyway, uh, we want to move to a, another segment of, of this uh, forum, and that's to talk about individual projects. And what we're going to do, since uh, Greg brought a nice um, poster of your project, um, we wanted to talk first about um, the what, what, what is the name of this? It, it, back in the day, it was the Intermodal Park, and it was Plum Creek before that. I'm not sure that any, everybody in here knows exactly what this giant piece of property to our, our east is called? Well, as the, the board behind you gives you a concept build-out plan of what it looks like. Um, it is a 2,600 acre piece of property. We do now call it uh, the North Florida Mega Industrial Park. We changed the name from uh, North Florida Intermodal Park back in late 2015. Shortly thereafter, we changed our name by merger and we became Warehouser in February 2016. But this project has uh, gone through uh, land use changes and zoning changes. It is a mixed use development, industrial uh, focused. It has 300 residential units primarily for work, workforce housing. It, has, it is approved for 8 million square foot of industrial and it has roughly 100,000 square foot of commercial. Uh, right now, we actively are marketing the project. We actually engaged uh, a broker. We started with CBRE back in 2015. We now have Cushman and Wakefield. You'll see some of their brochures I brought uh, and left on the table for anybody that'd like to uh, get a good summary of the project. But we are, uh, we've gone out and started aggressively marketing ourselves, not just laying back and waiting on the state. Uh, to provide us a lead, but we're also ourselves. We work very closely with the county, with the <coughs> city, uh, with DOT, CSX, FPNL. I think we've, uh, my predecessor uh, to the project, <coughs> Allison McGrath, did a great job building stakeholder uh, participation and awareness of the project, and it's time for us to go back around and re-educate uh, and update, because it is like, uh, Commissioner Williams says a lot of times if you don't see dirt turning, you don't think anything's being done. I assure you, there's people in this room think about this project every day. Um, I'm graded on the project every year. And so things are being done. The good news is the county has uh, submitted a Florida job growth uh, application for a grant. It was awarded over $3 million to build rail segment one, which is the spur coming from the CSX main line. It will come down and cross US 90. The difference of having a plan of when you can deliver rail, utilities, be it water or sewer, or seeing it there on site is night and day. When Klausner came visited back in Christmas 2014, they flew in and visited our site first. We, I was invited to ride with them as they looked at the Live Oak site. The only reason they selected the Live Oak site was they could see and touch the rail. We had the plan for the rail, but you had to take us on faith that we were going to be able to deliver it like we said we were. And while I admit it took longer than we all anticipated, we have now the spur that Columbia County now retains and our, when the spur is coming. And so that's a huge win. That's something, again, like you said, Commissioner, you guys stepped up. It's a tough thing to sign and commit to saying, yes, we want to get that grant, but also committing that in 10 years, if you don't produce the jobs to offset that cost, that we gotta pay it back. And I say we, because we are in this together, and I think you'd see us as a willing partner if they come to that. What, uh, Greg, what does the rail mean for the site? 
I, I'm not sure everybody in the room knows this was going to be a distribution facility, this, this whole project? Well, we, we started out understanding that <clears throat> it is a mixture. We, if you back during the recession when the diesel fuel got to $5 a gallon, it forced everybody to rethink transportation. So the first thing we wanted, you know, you go to low cost transportation. So an intermodal yard was the focus of how we're gonna bring in goods and product uh, and use multimodal systems. And of course, rail that we have is, as Jordan mentioned, it's one of the assets that this county has. There's only two sites in the state of Florida that has two class one rail systems in close proximity. Norfolk Southern, North South connectivity and CSX East West connectivity. So the key was to try and tie into that and become rail served opportunity to get those rail served and also to have a foreign trade zone to allow spillover from the Port of Jacksonville to be able to have somebody come in and assemble products together and ship in and out of North Florida mega industrial park and still enjoy as if you were on Jacksport property. So I think we started off that way and, and global logistics is certainly a focal point and a part of it. But I think industrial is, is really where we're leaning to now. So we're trying to, we got a big catcher's mitt on. We're looking at interest of five acre tracks, uh, small users, and we're, and we're shooting for the Kia plants. And all we gotta do is about 800, four, three. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the brochure. <laughs> Let me ask you, what, what, do you find there are some, besides time, is some of the obstacles you're facing at, at the mega site? Yeah, a lot of it is, is really is, is time itself. It's, it's so easy because if you don't have a user in your pocket with a construction permit that he's trying to get built in 12 months, it's hard for our agencies to take us seriously. We've gone progressive uh, permitting. We call that, as a new term we created, is just the fact that the company has decided we're gonna permit rail spur one and two and possibly three, and get those permitted and sitting on the shelf. Um, and we did that cooperation with the county, who got a grant from DEO to actually do the engineering plans for Rail Spur 2. And we think that's important because that speeds up delivery. If you have a company that comes in, they want to usually be up and running within 12 months. And we know if we have to build utility extensions, it's going to take, it's going to push everything we can do collectively to get it done in 12 months. And so there's a plan, and so that's the important thing, is, is what you said earlier. We gotta have a plan, we, ought to, we all ought to know what our part in that plan is, and we gotta be ready for change, because time will change it, just like your capacity. <coughs> we were so happy to know Kicklider was gonna not only start at one and a half, but be built at full capacity, because we thought all our problems had been solved, but capacity has come, opportunity has come, and we have to go and form another plan now, so we need to, we need to embrace that because that means growth is happening. Thank you, Greg. Um, anybody on the panel want to comment on that? I mean, that, that was the first big project that, that we saw here in Columbia County in a long time. And we're going to go, since we have two uh, uh, demonstration boards here, we have also the Bell Road project. And I was going to let the commissioner that, that was in charge that's in that district, Commissioner Williams, would you have a question? And we really appreciate all that Will Howler have done for the east side. Uh, let's talk about the next large parcels that we have. You got those? Bell Road? Bell Road. Yeah, that's, I was going to say it's in your district, so you want to talk about it. Uh, 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 Bell Road is, uh, is the next sleeping giant in Columbia County. When we speak of Bell Road, we're not speaking of that section of dirt road that goes from twin, from. Uh, 25A back to 441. Can you, t that's in layman's terms, that's 41 and 441. Yeah. Just south of I-10. Yeah, we're not just speaking of that acreage there when we talk about the Bell Road corridor. Uh, uh, Ms. Bullock owned a large section of land along <laughs> Bell Road, but when we, when we look at the Bell Road project, some, some believe that we're only talking about Bell Road, but we're talking about from Anderson, Columbia, back north, from Buddy Nail at Redbud, back north, and then you're talking about west on 75, on I-10, uh, that large acre <coughs> that at one time that, uh, that Linville Dixon owned there. So when you look at, and that property come from Mo Road back to uh, I-10. Uh, so you have a lot of acreage in there that where uh, we need, 
utilities. We need the infrastructure in place to accommodate that section to make it grow. When you warehouse Bell Road is the largest site we have now for development. So uh, that's why it's so important that we, we talk about the Bell Road corridor. Uh, 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 our IDA director always getting getting hits on the Bell Road project. Uh, DOT have given us the money to pay Bell Road. I mean, that's a blessing right there. We have the money to pay Bell Road, but uh, we we need to go ahead on and get that done and get the infrastructure in place there at at uh, uh, 441 and uh, uh, in Bell Road. That is where the sewer need to take place at. To, to house that section of, uh, of that, 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 that county. And just so everybody knows, that, that white thing in the right corner with the target on it, that's actually target. That's the <laughs> distribution center. Yeah. So, so that's, where this, that's where this property is. Uh, besides infrastructure, you said you got road paving. Are there any other obstacles that you're running into on that project? Well, when you look at that area, uh, you start looking north of, 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 of Columbia County, uh, just like Target, we had an environmental sensitive area on sense, wetlands to deal with. Uh, we have wetlands in that area, but uh, that, is, that can be overcome by mitigation. And once the mitigation takes place, uh, they are not, and I always use the term Class A, the Class F wetlands. If the, the closer the Class F, the, the less you have to mitigate per acre. Per acre. So uh, that whole area is, is prime development, especially with transportation being right there at, uh, at uh, 41, 441 in the I-10, I-75 <coughs> interchange. Uh, it, it's great, gonna be great for, for transportation there. And you, you heard uh, him say that transportation uh, is a key to uh, what we need. You heard DOT talk about the infrastructure uh, that we have in this county. Uh, that Bell Road corridor is a great, is the second great part, part of our industrial development property we have in Columbia County. Okay, there's, there's three more that were, have been identified. And uh, Tim, uh, you want to talk about I-75 Ellisville? Is that your district? That's mine. No, no, oh, Everett. Um, I'm sorry, Everett. I'm just, sorry. Just step back one step about this uh, North Florida Mega Industrial Park. The uh, channel over at Jacksonville, the port. I think that's going to have a lot to do with this project also as far as what's going to come into Jacksonville. They're talking about dredging it where more, bigger, larger ships can get in and out. So they're going to have a lot of stuff going in there. But I just wanted to say that a little bit. But now down to Ellisville, I've talked to the project manager at the Love Truck Stop. They're fixing to come online probably first part of June. He didn't give exact date. And they're employing somewhere around 50 people. Um, we have the Howell Herlong Road project that's really going to help um, Ellisville because of all of the people over towards Fort White can get to that area. Uh, we have the sewer system we had worked on. We've got it all up to running full force now. And we have, just as of today, the old truck stop that was there changed hands to a new owner today. And he has talked to me the last few days about he's putting in several restaurants that's going to go in that old, rest, old truck stop. He's going to have a full truck stop there. He's going to have gas. Also going to have a big shop in the back if he can get the county to let him do that. So we've got a lot of stuff that's going to be there, and there's a lot of other stuff that's going to come. There's a lot of people looking at stuff there. I, I'm not going to say what's going on, but they're looking at it. And of course, Ever, is that because the water and sewers down there? Yes, that the water and sewer, the infrastructure that we put there, the water and sewer, that has got those people in there for us now. So that's basically all I have down on that end. But I know that DOT probably will be involved in that area pretty soon with some red lights, I hope. Red lights in Ellisville. I never thought yeah, I'd right. say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, the next uh,
parcel of property or a next area that is prime for uh, development, either uh, retail or industrial or tourism, is the I-75 State Road 47. Now, Tim, is this one yours? Uh, that's in my district, but of course, uh, the kudos go to the city of Lake City uh, for adamantly going after that grant, and uh, the Mayor Witt just spoke of it, and, uh, and Melinda uh, spoke of, you know, th this is phase one. Uh, myself and uh, Paul Dow, uh, Director of Utilities with the city, we've had numerous conversations about this project, and just like Missy touched on before, uh, th this is a starting point. It, it's going to kick it, and it, it's bringing it to the north side of 75, I'm sorry, 47. Uh, and, and like Melinda said earlier, this this is an environmental uh, was an environmental grant, but of course, us as uh, legislators, we need to take advantage of that, and then of course it's up to us to turn it into economic development at this point. What is that intersection going to look like? I know that to the north of 47, there's a, a bunch of Caterpillar dealership, uh, there's several. Is that part of that development or is it all on the south side? It's of my understanding that all that part, correct me if I'm wrong, Paul, at any time, but uh, at that, or there's going to be uh, lift stations on the Caterpillar side of 75, lift stations over there where the uh, Wendy's were on the other side uh, with all the pipe infrastructure headed all the way back to Kick Lighter. And then, of course, uh, uh, I know uh, the county. Uh, Mr. Hunter has been talking to several people on projects on the south side and uh, once uh, county and city government comes together and we get commitments from these people, that's when it's going to come up time if there's not a grant sitting there in place that government collectively, we, we, we figure out a plan to what it's going to, how, how the finances are going to work to get across the street. Because we do know there, there's, uh, I, can, I know of two projects that are very, uh, aggressively uh, planning on doing infrastructure uh, improvements to the south side. And of course, this, I, uh, Ron, you're right, I, I remember that conversation very well uh, in the boardroom years ago, uh, and it just didn't make sense not to, but anyway, for whatever reason, <coughs> sewage lines aren't there all the way back up to town, but uh, so that's just gonna be another phase at, a, at another time, but uh, so with, with the help of uh, you know, the city, and, and you know, they've done a great part in this part of it, uh, and, and collectively, once a plan, once a project, and they're just around the corner, so everybody get ready, uh, that, you know, we're, we're going to have to collectively come together. If there's not a grant sitting there in place, it's time that us as government's going to have to buck up what it's going to take to get across uh, 47, and let, let's, uh, let's expand this thing, keep it going while we're hot and heavy on it. Just so the panel knows, we most of the city staff and county staff are here, and you can have a lifeline if you need it on any of these <laughs> projects. Um, let me ask you, let's go to the last project. I'm not sure who in the city can address this, but the, the Lake City or Lake City Gateway Airport is the last uh, project slash area that, need, that could be developed. Would anybody from the city like to talk about that? I know, Mayor, you mentioned that $13 million has been spent through grant funding to Im make improvements at the airport. Yeah, I mean, there's just tremendous potential out that way, and with the development that uh, Warehouser is doing out that way, I think it's just going to continue to grow, and what a lot of people don't understand is it's not just an airport, but we have industrial uh, facilities out there and, and other, uh, we have HACO, we have Homes of Merit, different things that are out there, so, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, commercial and uh, building going on and things going on out there and sooner or later you know it will keep growing and they will get some kind of commercial flights coming in and out and for uh, transportation needs uh, it'll be uh, tremendous we still have a lot of people that do come in and out of that airport Nick uh, I do know that this is not on the radar screen but I think uh, as a member of the TDC board and, and Commissioner William and, and, and uh, Commissioner Murphy, they both know about this and I uh, think we're working on hopefully uh, partnering with the county to, to uh, expand, develop uh, the Southside Sports Complex. Today, if you really look at the entire year, um, the complex bring in approximately about 
maybe 17 to 20 tournaments, and which brings in about close to 50 to 70 teams. And uh, just think about the amount of people which would come into this area uh, to support the retail and the gas stations and the restaurants. And I think uh, I think there is, uh, you know, I think there is good support from both of you commissioners, and I appreciate, uh, you know, being optimistic and positive about it. <coughs> um, I know Ben and Scott and everybody's looking into getting the cost together, but I hope that is one opportunity where the city and the county and the TDC could partner together and create <coughs> an investment which is probably m more than $2 million or maybe $3 million worth of investment. I think it's a great opportunity for the city to come and play a big role in it mm -hmm. as well. And uh, with these entities coming together, doing something, I think will prove that uh, you know, there is a way forward. And so I hope that happens. Uh, Nick, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, it kind of dovetails into my next question to the group, and that is, uh, what about existing businesses? Uh, Mike, before we go there, I got number sure. six on that list. Your what? Number six on that list. You didn't see it? I think we need to talk about the rivers and the springs. The tourism that comes in and out in the county. I don't know my list, but. Uh, I think we're going to get that into the questions later. Yeah, so. probably, but, but still, I Good think point. we talk about it. It's, uh, the TDC participates. We have local vendors and owners. We have, you've heard it, there's a lot of help from people in that end of the county that wants to protect the rivers. But they're doing that so the tourism is there. And the numbers and the amount of money that it brings in to the county. The Ix Tutney, I mean, everyone knows the Ix Tutney River in this state, every, in, all over the world, really. Santa Fe River, we've got the Swanee River on the north end, so it's not just the south. But our rivers, they're a resource. So as we grow and all the plans we make, we need to keep in mind that we protect our water supply. So let's just make sure that it's always in the discussion because this is a huge economic development factor for us on that end of the county. Well, I saw your hand. I, I had a, I wanted to, to comment with the mayor on the airport and working together. That's the biggest sleeping giant we have in Columbia County, the Lake City Airport. And I just hope that when the, when the city council hire a city manager, that part of his resume says airport. <laughs> uh, utilities and airport, what, what he there really should be, be, be into. Uh, not downtown redevelopment or anything, but that'll come. And I'm putting my plug in. Right <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to show you what happens when the government agencies work together, uh, the airport is a good example on the hangar that needs to be redone out there. Uh, the city and county came up with, 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 the, with the money along with the state to do, do that hangout there. That's what you do when you work together. Uh, there's no city or no county. It's a, for, for an airport that the county do not own, but the benefits is there no matter who owns it, in a sense of speaking. And that's the way it should work. And I'm going to touch on water just a little bit. That's my peak, peak pet right there. Water is the key. You can forget about Utilities, water, sewer, buildings, and whatever. If you don't have the water to provide the quality of life for Columbia County, we are in trouble. Amen. I tell everybody, it's like one day you, you ever went to your switch and switch it on and the light didn't come on? It might not be my generation or my kids' generation, but it's going to come a time that you cut that spigot on and no water comes out. And we, as Columbia County and North Florida, never should take our foot off the paddle uh, with the Swanee River Water Management and St. John Water Management District about the JEAO in Jacksonville. Now, we need to stay vigilant, and we need to speak up all the time that we cannot let the JEA suck us dry. And if we don't do that, they will suck us dry one day, and when we cut the spigot on, won't nothing come out, and we can get about everything else we talk about today. It's just that simple. Thank you. Um, move on to uh, we got one more question before we go to the questions from the audience, and that is existing businesses. What role does the county and city play in exist, existing businesses' growth? Like an industrial facility currently here, 
What is the role of the county and the city in helping them to expand to create additional jobs? Anyone? I'll, I'll take it again, Ron. Uh, yeah, as soon as I get done talking, you, you, you'll figure out what that is. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty tough for me, Ron, to sit aside that he can't hear out of that ear, I can't hear out of this. And so we, we talk about all kinds of things. But, uh, it, it, uh, you know, I'll, I'll pick on, uh, you know, previous, uh, you know, in the past we had a project that you had locals, uh, some locals spoke out very adamantly against that particular project. You know, what, I started my business here in Columbia County from scratch. You know, what, what, what are you doing to help me? And, and uh, the, you know, I get it. There's an argument both sides there. And, uh, and that's just up to us. Uh, three, uh, some of my uh, economic uh, development, uh, uh, volu I mean uh, volunteers, uh, committee members, I think it was three months ago we sat there and talked, well, you know, we may have accomplished our task here. You know, it may be time that, you know, at this point in time, we walk away from retail uh, incentives for what have you. So, uh, but Nick hit, on, hit, Nick hit the nail on the head a minute ago. When local government, and uh, I'm going to pick on Mr. O'Neill here in a moment, but when local government makes it so hard on the transitioning of somebody make a capital investment for that, that the return, it, it's just, Glenn shared this with me a while back. Every time we, we, we uh, apply for a DOE or DO, DO, uh, uh, in, I mean, a grant, they want a return on investment as well as the, the, these businessmen, we want a return on investment on our dollar. And so if the state's requiring it, assuredly we can require it. And, and I think it's us as government, make it just as easy for local, and, and, and you know, for the people, we can come up with a plan. And I know this is gonna stir a bunch of feathers, but you know, uh, the amount of years of establishment in Columbia County, they wanna make an X amount of dollar investment, it's up to us, you know, to, to give these local, business people that's been here for quite some time, make them feel like they're a part of it, you know, because it's their money that we're incentivizing the, uh, the, the newcomers, if you want to say, into town. And uh, I mean, uh, Chum, just briefly, if you don't mind, just kind of explain to them what we went through at the Wendy's, you know, on the infrastructure deal there, you know, when uh, Lester built the new Wendy's. I mean, that, you're talking about a major investment that a local entrepreneur had to make because and hopefully for the next guideline, it's going to be a lot easier, but I, I remember the headache y'all went through on the sewage plan out there. Tim, uh, many times, Lester and Anscaf, through their uh, career in Columbia County and the surrounding counties, they made investments uh, that were very significant. They would, uh, they would pay their way as far as getting their own sewer and water run to the locations. They, they did all kinds of different things. Uh, out at the uh, the Wendy's on 4775, uh, I believe he spent a little over $100,000 just putting in a septic system that would uh, handle the situation until the uh, city gets their sewer run. And I understand that it's coming, and that's going to be very good for everything. Uh, north of town, we uh, did a project in Ron's district a uh, uh, year ago, and uh, the folks, they had to invest somewhere around $300,000 to put in septic system and a water well just to suffice until the utilities are there. It, the utilities are of paramount importance to our county, our community. We, we need them in the worst kind of way. If you put them at each one of these locations, you're going to see nothing but flourishing growth. That's why Ellisville is taking off. And you can't imagine what's coming to Ellisville. There's, there's no. things that are going to be there that, that will be unbelievable. 41 and 441, the same thing. Of course, 47 is going to have a lot anyway. There's, there's just all kinds of things. But, but I'd also like to say, as we're talking about this, this is what's going to be the magic, getting all of the folks of our community together, talking, understanding what the need is, how we go about getting it, enlist some of these people here that have the capabilities of, of orchestrating all these things, there's a lot of quality here. 
and we have good people, and, and I'm just proud to see everybody starting to get together and talk about it. I mean, I, I think it's probably a big step for our community. Mike, on the incentive for, 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 for businesses that's already here, and they look and say, well, I've been here for 50 years, and you don't give money to my competition to build and move in, but the county have, through the Economic Development Board, have already have, have a, uh, a mechanism in sight to help local businesses. And we have, in the past, have helped local businesses that want to expand. When the chairman said that we look at the investment, what we're going to get in return, uh, the local business have that opportunity to apply to the Economic Development Board for incentives. So it's not like we shut them out. They have that opportunity to do so. And we have hope local businesses in the past. Anybody else like to add to local businesses? No? All right, we're going to go to questions here. We're, we're running right along. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, as the highest point, this is a long one, this is, and it's in handwriting, so please. As the highest point in Florida, equidistant between both coasts and with the roads and railroads, we are well positioned to accommodate warehousing and manufacturing from along the flooding coasts who need to relocate. What are we doing to attract these businesses that are already talking and looking? What are they saying is their reason for going elsewhere? This is Sandra Smith. Anybody would like to... Take that. Are we hearing why people aren't locating here? Is there one reason? Is is it because Ocala is better or Georgia is better or is there one thing? Is there many things? I, I, I'll take that. I've seen it happen. Uh, a, a company come in and say, "I need a." We're going to use this for for discussion. A hundred thousand uh, square foot building ready to move into. We don't have it. We do not have it. We cannot go out and get a grant, get a grant for serum water, get that, how a contract, build a building for them to come in. So they go to those communities where that building is already there, they can move directly in. That's one reason that that, that, that happens when they move on. Uh, and then we get this nice letter. We appreciate uh, uh, the opportunity of working with you. You have a great community, but unfortunately you did not have the building that we desire already. How many times is that? Is that a lot? That's a lot. That's a lot. A lot. Missy? Especially from the real estate perspective, when we get, you know, commercial, you know, uh, interest, you know, 47, I-75, um, you know, that's what they're, they're, you know, what is in place, what can we come in to tap into right now, and then they just continue going south. Yes. I mean, there's no reason that 47 is vacant, as vacant as it is in this economy right now. Missy, if I may, uh, Housing versus commercial, uh, are we in the same position, in your opinion, statewide as far as the value of property here versus other commercial Ocala areas, the Bybost areas and stuff like that? I mean, we are unbelievably affordable. We are unbelievably underpriced um, commercially as a real estate agent. You know, in different areas, a realtor here could not make a living just on commercial, and I've always said that. Um, you have to diversify. We all have to know here a little bit about it, all of it um, because we do not sell enough commercial property. There's just not enough here to make a living as a realtor. So we have to diversify. But when we look at uh, other parcels of land that are, uh, you know, same size, location, you know, near interstate systems, we are so underpriced, but we're underpriced because we don't have utilities. We're not attracting the big box stores that we need to be attracting. Okay, move on. Um, a few months ago, the reporter quoted someone believing that State Road 47 should be the next area of major development. My opinion is it should be Ellisville or 47. Uh, their, their question is, why are we developing two interchanges so close together? Need, Mark. Need. 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 Uh, uh, let's, let's look at 47 and U.S. 90. Uh, U.S. 90, 47 is, 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 uh, would be a completely di different animal than, 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 than uh, U.S. 90. The interchange is too close apart. When you go to Ellisville, you're going to see Ellisville with the hotel, 
and all there because it, it, once you get the infrastructure in it for its facilities, for eating facilities, uh, you'll see hotel and all stock being being developed there. Forty-seven to me would be a, a, a different animal than US 90. So this is why you don't put all your eggs in that one nest at 47 or at one nest at, at Edifield. You, you got two baskets to choose from in the development. And that's what's important because if you just do one, uh, you're gonna lose out on something. Anybody else? Our future depends on the plentiful supply of clean water. We must understand how growth and development will impact our future availability of clean water and our quality of life. How will you make sure that the protection of the Florida aquifer is of primary consideration as necessary plans for development in Columbia County move forward? This is Lloyd Barnard from Fort White. We discussed it a little bit, but I think she's asking for assurance. And I know you can't do that. Or maybe you can. Steve, Steve. Uh, you know, <clears throat> we've been talking about the uh, utilities with the city and all, and our new plant, you know, is state of the art, you know, it's uh, <clears throat> the, uh, as good as we can get at this time. And, and we're working on our reuse program, you know, so we can do reuse water, which is a big project now that we can take that and uh, use it on agricultural properties, golf courses, residential. And that's something that we all need to work on and uh, make sure we do that. Uh, as I said earlier, you know, we're very fortunate with the resources we have here, and we do need to protect them. I hear about springs all over the state that are in, in a lot of bad state of repair, and it's certainly uh, had some problems, but we still are in pretty good shape up here, and it is our job as with, with development, you know, to uh, make sure that what we do here doesn't hurt our environment. Well, Steve, if I may, I'll, I'll kind of touch on that there. You know, uh, just in my little district, you know, we currently, through the county, we've got two water quality projects going on, and, and I think it's us as legislators, I think it's definitely uh, our responsibility as well as everybody in this room. Uh, you know, we, we've been pretty fortunate in Tallahassee with uh, having Mrs. Porter sitting where she's at. We've got Senator Bradley, and then, of course, we've had a, 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 a governor for the last eight years that's been very, very adamant on the uh, qualities of our, our water. You know, having done everything correct, I agree with that 100%. Me and him had that discussion, but, you know, think back to the point to where that if we don't do nothing. And we can't continue to do nothing. You know, uh, Rusty hit a, a, he hit the nail on the head. Uh, that, that crystal clear water brings a lot of money to this community, but not only does it bring a lot of money to it, it brings a good quality of life where me and him, we, we grew up in that thing running around years ago. And, and I wanted to still sit there to, to be that way today. It's just like the uh, sewage problem, uh, project at 4775, like Mr. Moses said, you know, that's, a, that's a, 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 a water quality driven project. And, you know, it's a beginning and it's a start. You know, the uh, mega site, we're gonna run into issues out there. I've hunted there all my life. Uh, you know, we're gonna have the wet areas. We, we're gonna have to deal with that. But, you know, we'll overcome that with proper planning put into place. But, you know, uh, as far as the water quality issue, we're, we're at a big advantage. And I know this has been a pet peeve wrong for many, many years. And, uh, and it needs to be because uh, we need to send the cleanest amount of water back into the Ishtuckney Trace that we possibly can and do everything we can as government to do so. And uh, so I think the mayor said it right at the beginning of the meeting, we're at a pretty good, even though we're sitting here scrambling, wondering what we're gonna do about utilities and what have you, we still can pick and choose what wants to come to Columbia County. So, you know, if we, uh, so with that being said, I. Shut up, Mike. I, 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 I was going to make a point. Sure. I'd like to see this group do what you just said. We need to weigh out each project. We do have a unique area, and it may not fit. And, right. and this, this group's got to be able to say that project doesn't fit because it's a chance of ruining this environment. Or it may, it may fit at the mega site where it's flatlands, and it won't fit down in the sandy soil by the Kentucky. 
Right. So we have to all know our areas, which I think I know our board members do, and got to say, no, we want that, but it's got to go over here or it can't go. So we just have to stick to our guns and do our job. Mike, I, I just wanted to say also that what everybody around here has probably always heard the Lake City spray field has been converted over to the uh, wetlands. And uh, Swanee River Water Management worked with the city on that project, and it's uh, this Friday morning. In fact, there's a group of legislative delegation that's coming through to look at that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's been a big project for this area and for protection of our water. I'm going to, this is, this basically makes some points. The state of Florida spent over $37 million to acquire Itch Tuckney Springs State Park and nearby lands to protect the aquifer that feeds the springs and river and provides our drinking water. The Itch Tuckney has lost a quarter of its historic average flow and pollution is double the state standard. What questions will you ask and how will you evaluate new infrastructure and development projects to ensure protection of the Itch Tuckney and ensure water security for us and future generations? And I, and I know you all made your points there. Anybody want to add anything to that about what? Mike, I, I think we will we, we'll address that. Uh, uh, we'll we begin to say the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, uh, Russell had a good point uh, uh, just a few minutes ago. That when, we, when, we, when we look at development, and not only development, uh, when we look at ag, ag is the largest uh, land use that we have in Columbia County. Uh, uh, the hardest job I've had, decision I've made, is trying to tell somebody what to do with the property. Uh, for the old timers, know that Columbia County was the last one to adopt a comprehensive land use plan. And the only reason we've done it one then because the Tallahassee said, if you don't, we will for you, you know, since speaking. But things happen. Uh, uh, you evaluate a, 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 a project. On, on its own merits, uh, we 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 cannot afford to put a project in a bad a, a project in a bad place where we know there's a possibility of contamination of uh, the underground in the East Tucker Trace. We know that, but we also got to realize that there's technology that uh, that is out there to protect that from happening, and one might say. Uh, why, why take that chance? But we take a chance every time we get in a car, and, I, and I've been a spokesman for, for protecting water, but you got to evaluate that problem on its own, that, that project on the own merit. And I, I, I think this group uh, uh, will not let that happen. And, and, and Russell hit the nail on the head. You evaluate that project before you put it in the east side of the trace. And that's how you protect it. Okay, we're moving on from water. Why are most of the entities, or why, why are most of the entities fail to collaborate with Career Source Florida Crown? We bring business and job seekers together with high wage rate paying jobs. Uh, there are plenty of grants available through Florida Department of Economic Opportunity, such as EWT and QRT from Anna Mendoza. The question, I guess, is this group doesn't talk with Career Source or doesn't, I don't know. Anybody like that question? I didn't, Mike, I didn't Greg? understand the question. Greg? I didn't the question. Well, I just, from our perspective, Career Source is one of our big partners. I mean, I, I think to exclude them is a, is a mistake. I don't think it's intended. Um, I do, from my own experience, it was the biggest uh, partner and the quietest one in the room that we didn't know anything about when we started this project. And to understand the strengths and the ability for them to come in and, and assist not only the schools and the college, but also the businesses that are coming to train workers, to take over their book work, to help them in any way possible and provide grants, just as, as she mentioned on her, on her note there. It, they are an asset and they are part of the solution. And, and it, trust me, we haven't overlooked them and I don't think anybody here does either. I mean, they, they're a big asset to this team. Anybody else like to add to that? I think I agree with Greg. And most of the managers at the hotels probably don't even know that that's the resources they could go to. So my advice would be to get out there and speak about it. You know, go out there into different clubs and meetings, and uh, whether it's uh, association meetings, and tell them what you guys do. And I think um, until you do that in a very extensive way, you know, businesses will not know that you're there. 
Next question. I thought I'm not supposed to say this in here, but Santa Fe Community College offers technical programs and apprenticeships. Swanee, Taylor, and Madison counties offer technical programs while focusing on bringing new business to the area. What ways are being looked at to increase the skilled labor pool locally? Well, uh, well Donna Barrett and I work, we work close together. He's, he's got grants for automotive industry, um, the aviation industry we've already talked about. Um, some of the things we do at the high school, Swanee Valley has their own technical school, uh, like Taylor County has theirs. That's something we can't have in Columbia County. Columbia County has technical programs at each high school, and we work closely with Dr. Barrett in trying to make sure um, without saying too much but about what the future is going to hold, we want to make sure that our resources are used for the best that they can be. He's, if he's going to do automotive industry, then we need to have kids supporting that through the dual enrollment program, and that's something that we're fixed to see a shift and change in how we do meet the needs of the people uh, at the college. But, you know, they're, they're apples and, and cucumbers when you look at some districts, because some districts have technical centers and some like Columbia County, have, we have our CT programs at our high schools, and uh, we, but we work joined hand in hand, nursing, welding. Uh, we do a lot of things together where we send kids from Columbia High and Fort White High School to the college here, not Santa Fe. And I just follow up on two things is that I'll talk about automotive at the end, but the apprenticeship um, at colleges across Florida, Florida is not embracing apprenticeships because actually we don't get any money to do that apprenticeship. So any of the apprenticeships at the college level for any of these industries that we have to provide those industries, we get zero dollars. So, so supervision of those programs or anything like that, we get no money in the state of Florida for that. So that's one of the reasons why apprenticeships at the college level, while um, states like North Carolina are embracing those things, at a college level we get zero dollars for any apprenticeship. So when we try to do an apprenticeship, if we decide to do that, we have to eat the entire cost and get no money, including tuition for students. No tuition for students and no state aid for that. Um, moving on um, with Lex's comment, one of the most exciting things we're doing here is we're trying to get back into the trades. You don't forget who brought you here at this college. And one of the challenges, and that's what I kind of say, is through our automotive program that we're going to be kicking off in January, um, that's going to be solely um, currently funded. The state is not giving us any grants currently for that program. So we're doing... Um, Fundraising for that or through our foundation, Mr. Pinchock and so forth is working with, and we've already secured about a half a million dollars in private um, donations for that program to make it happen. And the college is contributing about another 130,000. And we talk about repurposing buildings. Lex and I always talk about repurposing. Um, we're taking an existing building. We're not trying to ask for an $8 million building. We're repurposing an existing building and making first class. And we're embracing that because um, he has a great automotive program. At Columbia, at Columbia High School and are throughout the region. So they're going to feed us. And that program alone, 1,400 openings in northern Florida for auto technicians. And just here in Lake City, there's 47 current openings. So those are the kinds of things we need to do. All right. Last question here. And again, this goes back to water. I promise we have the last water question. It's absolute. It is, it is uh, absolute that our quality of life is intrinsically tied to the health of our natural systems. Knowing that we are seeing a resurgence of popularity partly tied to our freshwater springs, how will the balance be created in protection of our clean water if industry grows unsustainably? What are the plans for long-term sustainability? Steve? Uh, that's kind of getting to be a universal problem. I mean all the way across the country. The whole state of Florida is, is facing that. And uh, we're talking about economic growth tonight and, and getting people to come in and businesses to come in. And with that, there is cost and, and it does, there's more people. Uh, Ron was talking about JEA and Jacksonville, but St. John's County and all of those places are just exploding. And the demand on the water supply, as Ron and Tim were talking about, is pulling the water from here. So it's happening all over, and uh, we've got to do our part. And, and you know, there's growth, but then, again, with it, there's the cost, and we just got to uh, statewide and use the best technologies there are to preserve what we have. Bucky? I believe, you know, our board is water-sensitive board. Um, I believe 
you, you take care of each business case by case. We're not going to sacrifice the aquifer for a business. And I think it's when people elect your leaders, you should keep that in mind. Because, you know, you talk about the class of 2030. Well, when the class 77, I don't remember buying water bottles and water <laughs> bottles being over where you went and buying them out of stores and different things like that. So it's always going to be an ongoing problem. So it, and it, it gets worse and worse every day. But I have confidence in people sitting here that we wouldn't sacrifice water for jobs. If it, if a business didn't, couldn't locate somewhere else and wanted to locate in Columbia County and used a tremendous amount of water, I think we would turn them away. All right, that's all of our questions. Um, Ron, you got a comment? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to do a summary here. I hear all the time about water, 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 water. It's important. But uh, he said, our problem, our, the biggest problem we have do not lay in the boundaries of Columbia County. And that little old deal that says this is Columbia County, that's not our enemy. And, and I, I, I will never vote for a water plant to come here and draw water out of our I'll never do that. But I'm going to judge the quality of a business that might use water on their marriage. So I want everybody to be just as vocal about what takes place to the east of us than what we do as a governing body here in Columbia County. That is where the battle line lies, not on a business located in Columbia County. The battle line lies east of us is where it lies. I'm going to summarize what we learned today, and everybody can chime in here at the end. Um, utilities are a concern for further economic growth. The city and the county need to work together collectively to be on the same page with regard to economic development going forward. We need to work on, from a real estate uh, uh, standpoint, the lack of inventory on commercial and residential housing uh, as well. Uh, would anybody like to add anything that I didn't get on that? Oh, I'm sorry, water. I'm, gee whiz. <laughs> I thought that was a given. <laughs> Tim, Bucky? Yeah, I, I think at some point, you know, the private industries have, they have to take their businesses moving forward. They can't always ask for the government to help. And you also, when you have to balance what you want Columbia County to be. You want it to be Columbia County, you're in the middle of, you got Tallahassee, you got Jacksonville, Valdosta, Gainesville, we're right in the middle, 67. When you talk about retail and different things, if you look at what's happened on 90, those businesses didn't come, developers come and built those buildings and got long-term leases to flip those buildings for cap rates. Those are, that's, that's just the way the world's going right now. The big uh, shopping center that we incentivize, they've already flipped that for a cap rate. Their investment companies are buying them up to get the the national tenants in there for long-term leases. Now, if you're going to if you're going to dance in the uh, retail side, we need to understand what they're doing in the retail side. Now, if you're going to get hung up on the, in the beginning on what they're going to make on the back end, then that's not going to you're, you're not going to have a a shopping center out there. Now, if like if you had a shopping center there, and we were able to put one on the other side of 75. You, those are those are things that people come to your community from your outer. You bring those. You bring from your outer communities come to Lake <coughs> City, just like everybody goes to Gainesville. How many times does everybody in this room go to Gainesville? Well, do you want to be Gainesville? If you're going to be Gainesville, you got to get on the. You got to do the industrial side to build your your population up for those other. Called entities to come, your Dick's Sporting Goods, your 
the Bass Pro Shops and all those other ones, but when you go to competing with them and somebody 45 miles an hour, I mean 45 miles down the road, can put a bridge across 75 and incentivize those people, you're not going to get those. So you got, you got to, I think economic development in Columbia County, the problem is, I think what you do is you get our, our leaders meeting and talking about it like it's happening here. The Board of County Commissioners, you start putting reserve away for when you do get like somebody there, we're going to have to put roads in for Greg and those guys out there. We'll be on top of that. You got to have a plan. But then what do you, what, what do you want Columbia County to be in 2030? Do you want it to be Ocala? Do you want it to be Tallahassee? If you're going to control your growth, then what are you going after? When you talk about retail space, it's the average retail space here at $12. The average retail space in Orlando is $30 a square foot. And that's two hours down the road. Val Valdosta, I think, is 26, and uh, Ocala is 28 per 1,250 square per little where you sports clips and things like that go. So I think we're moving in the right direction. And I'd like to see out of here like the utilities. Um, why don't we form a utility committee that that has the city and the county on it? Like, you know, or a presentation on your two point nine million dollars that's gonna, you know, put sewers to uh seventy five in my district and I don't know nothing about it. You know, so the, those are things that we can do and when <coughs> In order to c compete with some of your surrounding people, you got to be identify what business you can compete with, and you have to shorten the window for them to sign their contract until they go in business. That's what I believe. And by doing that, you have your railroad spurs in, you have your utilities in, and you identify where you're going to put them. Anybody else like to add to that? I'm all. As I sat here, there's one thing I learned, I believe, that was spoken by several people. That as of today, our economic development should be 10 to 50 job companies because that's where we're at with our education, our workforce. That's where we're at with our utilities. That's where we're at with everything. So that's what I learned today. I mean, I hope everybody picked that up. because that's So that's where we're focusing now. If we land that 400, we're going to have to all scramble. We're all hoping for that, like Nick said. Go for go for what we can get and hope we get better, I think you said somebody did. Mm -hmm. But that you know, today that's that's what this I think we decided that today with everybody's opinion and where we're at with workforce, where we're at with <coughs> utilities, everything. So, you know, it's I feel like we did come away with one point. That's a good one. In the next meeting we can go to a second point. Yeah, I think I uh, we all can leave with a couple of things here, which is so important. As 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 somebody who's been in this county and city for the last 25 years, um, the disconnection between city and county is, uh, has, has existed for a very long period of time. And I applaud Commissioner Murphy for being very optimistic about it. Uh, you know, I guess the county has to take a leadership role and put something together where the, the, the county managers and the city officials can talk on a very regular basis. As you say, communication is very important because what has happened is you know, to be very frank with you, many years ago, <coughs> uh, you know, uh, Commissioner Montgomery, uh, former commissioner, I guess, um, uh, did uh, put a reunification committee, and I guess uh, many of you could be members of it, where, wherein he was trying to bring in some of the utilities or the fire uh, services together uh, and make it as a one unit. Maybe the city could put the fire services into one unit and save considerable amount of money going forward. And these are not easy things to do. But at some point, we are small, we're not that big, and we don't need two fire fighting forces. Uh, and I think the city and the county could realize considerable gains if we do that. Um, and there could be other opportunities. Another thing is, if you ask the county managers uh, and the city officials who run the city, uh, Kaysen, said, <clears throat> how, how are you going to incentivize if you just don't have the money? Because at the end of the day, these companies are not going to come in if you can't incentivize. Ocala is going to take everything away from here. You could see the big distribution networks. 
Uh, FedEx has come up there. There's another one which is under mm -hmm. construction. Look, we are a better location in Ocala. There is no reason for these distribution networks to go there. But if we can even make it better, then they're not going to come here. And, and money plays a very important role here. And there has to be a way for the county and the city, and I mean more for the city, to put money on the side. Every year you must put money on the side like a, a good business person. And in a very short period of time, you'll have millions of dollars. You don't have to go search for that money. You have it. At the end of the day, if you're not going to use it, then give it back. But at least you've got to have a reserve economic fund or infrastructure fund. Put aside maybe $300,000 or half a million dollars every year. And in no time, you're going to have a big fund. You could use that fund to incentivize big corporations, big and small, to come in. And that has to happen. So. Lex? I don't want anybody to answer this, because I'm just <laughs> asking it out here. But I've heard this over and over, and I'm an educator, and I'm, I'm apologizing for not knowing this, but, but we, and don't answer. But what did Ocala do to get ahead of us? What's what? What did Ocala do to get ahead of us? What did Marion County do to get ahead of us? So I, don't, I, I mean, because I, I'm, I'm not, I, I mean, I'm you, trying not to point fingers. You know, I can I, tell I, you. I don't know. But, I, but that's I the key you. to me, is that whatever they did, we need to try to do. Uh, here's what Marion County done, and here's what the state of Georgia done. <laughs> The state of Georgia, in, in, in to the north of us, have a, a sale tax that goes directly to economic development. Marion County have a special tax that goes directly to economic development. So they are large counties, and that one penny can bring in a, uh, take for instance the infrastructure tax that the county is proposing, uh, bring is one penny, bring on seven point one point seven point eight million dollars. Think of what a town like Valdosta brings in, and think about what a town like Marion County brings in, County Marion County brings in on one cent. That money goes directly to economic development. That is what the difference is. They got the M16, we got BB gun. Is what we got. So, so that there lies the problem. That lies the problem with local government have to step up and divide that that fund. For, for, for economic development. I'm gonna say this, Mike. For 20 years, we tried to get through the Arthur Lewis National Park. <laughs> the little cocky-headed red woodpecker stopped us from doing so. But every time we see the keeper of the government woods, I think we need to tell, you, tell him thank you. Columbia County, we need to tell him thank you for working with us and fi he found that and his staff found that that area where that railroad is coming through. So every time that we see him, we need to say thank you for working with Columbia County and Plum Creek to get us a, 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 a right away from the railroad track to the National Park back to U.S. 9. And I'm through for the night. Thank you. <laughs> Tim, Tim, you want to wrap things up? Yeah, uh, real quick. Uh, I'm committed to the public that's taking the time out of their day to come here and uh, uh, call it the driving force, pushing, whatever. But I, I, I know I can just feel I, I've got support of the people in here. Uh, we're going to sit down with Ben. Uh, I ain't got one thing to say, Melinda. Y'all may need to go in there and change your scope. Uh, uh, your city manager is coming into, uh, you know, you're going to say, who in the heck's Tim Murphy? But anyway. Right. <laughs> but they got a big task. But all jokes aside, I think we're at, we're at a perfect time. I, I really do. And I'm committed to the city council as well as I'm committed to everybody in this room and this board. Uh, we're we're going to make a difference one way or another. Small Lemon Dix told me something a long time ago. He said, Tim, he says, grow, he said, by inches. He says, them big leaps, them big jumps, he said, they're the ones that always cost you money in the long run. I tried it on the big leap, and I'm living proof it doesn't work that way. So, uh, but, and you got to take all these types of inputs into consideration. And, and uh, you know, we're, we're, at a, uh, we're at a perfect situation here. And when this board comes together again, and I'm going to commit to you, I'm going to work with Mr. Ben Scott back there, who will entail work with the mayor, and the incoming, uh, uh, we're going to set 
another public meeting up to have another discussion. It may not, but we may not be televised or nothing along them lines, but we're fixing to put a plan together. You guys put your thinking cap on. You know, we, we, we know we got the sunshine that we got to, it kind of locks our hands to some degrees, but uh, you talk to your people, we're, we're, we're going to come together, we're going to make this thing happen. And I hope everybody out here hold us accountable, like I said before. And, uh, you know, y'all are just as much a part of this as we are, you know, and it's, uh, it's time we get off our butts and make something happen for a difference around here. And uh, that's about the only way I know how to put it, Mike. Uh, you just send anything in relevance to this meeting, just send it to the Board of County Commissioners. Mr. Ben's back there waving at me, so I would say. And then, of course, we will also in turn share, you know, make sure the City Council gets it. Uh, everything we get, they get. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank and, you all for uh, coming. Go ahead. Thank you all for coming. Okay, thank you.